Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and & Dragons, and we're going to talk about Pinkertons, a private security group and detective agency since 1850, and the seizure of Dungeons & Dragons components. Woo! Let's go. All right, here we go. All right, so, breaking news! I'm not breaking the news. I'm simply reporting on the news that broke yesterday. All right. So uh, here at Channel Garibay, we're like we have limited resources. So this is this is so I looked at an array. Uh, this is a pretty major Dungeons and Dragons event, okay? Um, and I looked at an array of news sources and I collected those up and I'm going to summarize the situation for you as I understand it, and then I'm going to give you my commentary on this breaking news. Right now, since we have limited resources at at, at um, you know Channel Garibay, um, you may. Uh, if I, if anything I say doesn't match what you know or what a source that you read says happened, let me know in the comments below. One, it helps anybody who's reading the comments to understand the story better, right? And two, if there's, if I, at any point I ever make a significant misstatement, it gives me an, an opportunity to correct it in a future video, okay? So that we all understand the situation better. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the Dungeons & Dragons components that, that, reportedly were seized from someone's house, right, okay, by the Pinkertons at the request of Hasbro Guardian Duns and Dragons, okay, so there is this, uh, so Magic the Gathering, okay, um, I think some people use Magic the Gathering cards to play a game, a, a card game, right, but Magic the Gathering cards important, most important function today is as Duns and Dragons components, so what got seized? March of the Machines Aftermath. What is that? That is a set of about, uh, I think it's it's either one of the smaller sets, which is probably about 180 to maybe 220 cards, right? And it is a Magic the Gathering set that physically gives you every non-player character, every magic item, every location in that area of Dominaria, which is an official Dungeons & Dragons realm, an official Dungeons & Dragons setting, okay? When did Dominaria, the Magic the Gathering realm, become an official Dungeons and Dragons realm? It became an official Dungeons and Dragons realm in August of 2018 with Plane Shift Dominaria. It was written by James Wyatt. Okay, so um, so at this so the important part of this is that there, there was a gentleman who was on old school MTG and he got a whole booster. He got a whole from what I understood, he got an entire um, booster case, which is 36 packs of these Dungeons and Dragons components, right? Which are physical representation on cards of non-player characters, locations, magic items, uh, and spells that all exist within the official Dungeons and Dragons realm, Dominaria, right? So he takes these Dungeons and Dragons components, right? And he, and he gets access to March of the Machines before the street date. He takes them onto his YouTube channel and he does an opening, a reveal of these Dungeons and Dragons components, right? These physical cards that show NPCs, locations, um, magic items, and spells that are all exist within the Dungeons and Dragons realm, Dominaria, right? So he is doing spoilers for Dungeons and Dragons. Uh oh, right? Now, first of all, have you ever experienced this? I have. Let's talk about it, okay? Um, and because we're going to talk about what happened and who was in the wrong. Okay, so first of all, uh, I am a I am a comic book fan. Okay, I have bought throughout my entire life thousands of Marvel, DC, Image, um, Gen uh, Cross Gen, um, at Boom uh, Boom, and many other um, comic book comic books from comic book companies. Right, so. You might have had this experience. So I will go into the comic shop on a, on a Tuesday night. And where I go, they literally put a sheet over this section. And they're laying out all the new books that you will be able to buy when you come in at noon on Wednesday. Right? And they put them out on Tuesday. Okay? And I saw, I've seen this situation happen. Right? So so the, the person who's working it leaves the sheet off and goes over to, uh, leaves the sheet off of this new section which is all books are only available on Wednesday, but are being put out on Tuesday night by the shop, on literally under like a tarp, 
right? But they leave the tarp off because somebody says, hey, I got a question over here. Can you come over to the desk? Right? And there was only one person on that night. So one of the customers goes up and picks up the, and like, and I, I could see like they were kind of did it real quick and sly, right? And then they brought it up later and that person says, oh, I can't sell you this. The street date is tomorrow. And the guy's like, you can sell this to me. Come on, man. What's the matter? Right? And like, and so I sidle over, right? And I was ready to, you know, kind of jump in because I know what's going on. I know it's wrong, right? The street date is tomorrow, right? And if you think you can just sidle up and grab one of them on the sly and throw it in with your regular, with your regular pole, that ain't right, buddy, right? Like you are doing wrong. You are breaking the street date, right? This is America, right? Home of the good, the brave, and the free, right? That your evil aligned actions are not welcome, right? In my humble opinion, that's what old school MTG was doing, right? This guy ain't, he's, he's not some nuke. He knew exactly what he was doing in my humble opinion, right? From what it looks like, he knew that he was breaking this before the street date. And that ain't cool, right? I don't go snagging comics off the rack on Tuesday to, when they're only supposed to be brought on Wednesday. Now, if he comes out and he says that he didn't know and he was unaware, but like the dude has a channel about these Dungeons Dragons components, right? So he should know, right? So in my humble opinion, Hasbro dispatched the Pinkertons, brave Western uh, um, detective agency since 1850, highly respectable organization, right? And they were going there to get material that had been broken on the street date. It's not cool, man. So in my humble opinion, Hasbro did exactly what they should have, right? And it sounds like they did it very respectfully and they had every right to do it, right? Because I think the dude knew he was breaking stuff before the street date and that's not cool, right? Um, and so, so that's my take on what happened, right? And I think the guy knew what he was doing and I think he was doing it to get clicks. A lot of people do a lot of stuff to get clicks now. And it's tempting. I get it, right? Like, I'm, I'm, I, I try hard to make sure I do not, I do not use, I try hard, right, to live up to a ethical code on my channel, right? And that ethics code is the Dungeon Dragons Commentator's Ethics Code, right? Which, here's what I understand it to be now, Right? do the right thing. You don't break a street date on a product if you know the street date has an it. And I think he knew the street date can add an it, right? Also, you don't clickbait, right? I can't believe how many D&D commentators are like, oh, I know my uh, my title was clickbaity there. I don't put up clickbait titles, right? I do not. And if you think I am putting up a clickbait title, let me know. Recently, like I called out another D&D commentator. People came up in my, in my comments were like, Scott, you're doing the same thing, right? And so I took a challenge to myself for one week, not to, you know, to change my behavior. And I kept that promise. <laughs> you know? And and so, you know, I try hard to make sure I don't have clickbait titles, right? And if I do, call me out, man, I'll, and I'll fix it going forward, right? And so, you know, no clickbait titles. You don't break street date. And, uh, and you have a duty to the truth, right? You have a duty to the truth. You can't exaggerate. You can't use hyperbole. Now, here's the problem. I am a YouTuber, right? We gotta put a little we gotta put a little hot sauce on the taco. You know what I mean? So sometimes there'll be something that's put in there for flavor, right? But you want to you want to be truthful, right? And I I'm trying to do that, right? And anytime I fail you as a D and D commentator, put it in the comments, and I'm re and I will tell you, right? I am sensitive between you and me, right? I get a lot more negative than I do positive. And I think that's the case with every YouTuber, but we all forget. We we go into the comments to read something delightful, and we find, you know, like somebody fanged you with, you know, with their fangs. Oh, my day was hard, so I'm just going to castigate you, right? Like, and it's hard as a YouTuber, right? So, but I'm trying to grow and listen and learn and be as responsive to you as you guys are to me, right? And I am I'm incredibly fortunate. I'm coming up on I have 915 thousand views right and I'm coming up on a million and I am, would not be getting there without each and every one of you I have 2,230 subs I'm about if I get 100 more subs I will be over my highest point for subs I've ever been I was at 2,300 went all the way down to 1,800 right that's a whole story in itself 
Um, but I'm so thankful to you that my view, my subscribers are going up and my views are going up. And I don't take that for granted. And I owe you a duty of honesty, not breaking street dates. And um, you know, what is what is the D and D commentator's ethical code? Don't break street date on product. You know the street date hasn't been met. Um, be truthful. And um, and I would say be fair to Dungeons and Dragons, right? And psh, I would say push back against the indie haters. I think that's part of it too. Um, that's my take, right? Uh, and also <laughs> pull the sheepskins off the wolves because there are a lot of wolves among people who say they are D and D commentators, D and T supporters, right? And I, I'm saying, hey, if you see a sheepskin on a wolf, pull that off. I think that's part of the code. That's what I think the D and D commentator code is, and I think this do. I think old M, old school MTG. I think he knew the street date was there, right? In my humble opinion, and he was purposely breaking the street date. Old school M MTG. I'm more than welcome to hear you out. Like if you if I'm wrong, please let me know in the, in the comments below. That's my take on it. I think Hasbro did exactly the right thing. I think they did it very respectfully, and frankly. I am very excited to see the Pinkertons doing doing the good noble deed. And I think that's exactly what they did. Breaking the street date ain't cool, right? That's my two cents. That Actually, all of that is my humble opinion, which is worth more than two cents in my opinion. <laughs> What's important is when I get to hear your two cents, <laughs> which actually I think yours is a silver dollar. <laughs> so when I get to hear your humble opinion, uh, please consider, please um, send your traffic Please consider liking, subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.